All right, good evening, everybody. Just a quick update on some topics here, uh, the phone calls and uh, conversations at the general membership meeting this afternoon were pretty topic specific. So let me just touch on a few for those of you that were not in attendance. 12 hour days, there is no discussion, no agreement whatsoever with the city. There hasn't been any conversations, nor will we just let them arbitrarily decide to change the working hours. Uh, that is a subject of negotiations. They cannot get around it and that has never even taken place, whether it's one district like the 5th District, the rumors, and sadly members uh, <laughs> subscribing to the rumor just for political purposes when it comes to the FOP politics of this all. It's pretty disgusting, but I'm just telling you, it's all lies, every single word of it. We've had no conversations at all. RDO's time off. I know a lot of members are disgusted yet again, and I get it. Uh, we've been dealing with this far too long. I guess their idea is just to break everybody's spirit or even want to be the police at this point uh, until there's maybe 5,000 police left on this job. But the inconsiderate uh, accommodations that our exempt staff makes, and again, I've said, talked about this being, you know, the ghost payroll or Superintendent Brown or useless Carter, but this goes to every chief, including McDermott, you know, and, and every other chief, Tally, what a joke. Um, they are the ones making the decisions about manpower and these days off being canceled. They do not give a damn. I've heard some of these chiefs talk about, yeah, we're here for you, especially during the portal. No, you're not. You're here for yourself. And this is just yet another example. You know, I'm glad the renaming of Lakeshore Drive to DeSable Drive, you know, solved the violence on Lakeshore Drive. What a joke. So now because you have a shooting in the middle of the Gold Coast, because ignorant people don't want to have any personal accountability or responsibility or, you know, repercussions for bad behavior. The rest of the department has to pay the price now as a knee-jerk reaction. It's disgusting what counts as leadership in this job. I will tell you this. That order talks about your first RDO being canceled starting tonight through the 22nd. It also talks about elective time off. If anybody already had time in for elect, you know, elected time off, whether it's comp time, personal time, baby furlough days, uh, period. Our MOU with the city was very clear. They had to deny that time off request seven days or more in advance. If you did not already get notified that your time off request was denied, they cannot now readdress it and tell everybody, I know you had time in for this weekend, but you're going to have to get approval for it. No, you do not. That time is yours. They do not have the ability or the authority to rescind that time according to the memorandum that has already been signed by the city and the lodge. You had that time in. It is your time. They cannot take it away. If someone tries to tell you otherwise, contact the lodge. We're going to obviously fight it um, and deal with it from there. But even Management Labor Affairs is in agreement. They cannot take away time due that's already been granted for the next five days coming forward. Period. Um... And Jeanette Young, $2.9 million this city council just gave to a person who basically outed herself. There was a raid with a wrong address. It was an honest mistake. That video was never supposed to see the light of day, not only because the mayor uh, didn't want the embarrassment and was trying to hide it, kind of like her predecessor did, but the reality is the court said not to. Her lawyer was the one who pushed to have that video released so then he could turn around and sue the city, which is what they did. And now we have Alderman giving $2.9 million to somebody who was not beaten, not shot, not anything by the police department except maybe embarrassed, and I'm not discounting the, the embarrassment level of this, uh, about not being clothed, but $2.9 million of taxpayers' money being given willingly by the majority of the aldermen in city council. It's unreal what this city has turned into, but that's where we're at. That's why things need to change. That's why there needs to be a super PAC fund to go after these aldermen who just don't get it. No matter how many times it's explained to them, they just don't get it. They have their own agenda and shame on them, but we'll deal with that at a later date going forward. Email. Everybody got an email. A lot of members lost their minds when that email came out from the city talking about you have to get the vaccine by January 1st. And then the city sent a rescinding of that email to uh, our department members. 
our TRO is still in effect. It is not gone anywhere. Until it is arbitrated, that TRO will be remaining in effect, regardless of anybody else's um, arbitration awards, whatever that may be. The email was sent out to the full city workforce. It was not specific to the police department. It is a scare tactic. It is just a game the city plays. They're going to play, oh, we didn't mean to send it out to CPD members. We know that uh, they're kind of exempt for the time being, so to speak. Uh, but they literally are willing to play dirty politics to scare officers into getting the vaccine. Let me be very clear. You do not have to get vaccinated, period. If you do not want to get vaccinated, it is your individual choice. Until the arbitrator says otherwise and that TRO is lifted, if that happens, you do not have any obligation to comply with the city's nonsense. You do, however, have to submit to the testing. If you filled out the portal, you said you were going to submit the testing. The city is going to start putting officers in no pay status who are not in compliance with the vaccine or the testing procedures. So I am telling you right now, when you submit your tests, take a picture of your test that you are submitting in the portal before you hit submit. So you have proof that it was submitted on the date and time because there will be inevitably people who are told that they were not in compliance and put in a no paid status. And you're going to have to provide proof that you did because we know how inept and ridiculous this city is when it comes to doing things the right way. It just doesn't. So again, verify and leave a paper trail that you are submitting those tests so you do not miss a paycheck. There is no expectation, nor should there be, that anything is changing with the retro check to be paid on the 30th. If you are active on duty, you will be paid direct deposit like your regular pay. If you are not, you will get a hard check. I do not know how or where that's going to be distributed on the 30th, whether it's City Hall, Department of Finance, HR. I don't know. I don't have the answer yet. Uh, hopefully we have that next week. But you're going to get your retro check on the 30th. Religious exemptions. We talked about exemptions for the thing. An exemption of any kind only grants you an exemption from the vaccination, not the portal. You still have to comply with the portal at one point when you get counseled, one way or the other. Um, I shouldn't say you have to comply. You have the option to comply or not. That's your personal choice. But the exemption specifically, a lot of members are talking about the denial of the religious exemption and the five-day window to reply, what do I do? We set it from the get-go. You do not do anything. The city created that religious exemption, which has a section in it that is not obligated under law. They think it is. I'm telling you it's not. The U.S. Supreme Court has said as much that it is not. They don't get to arbitrarily decide whatever they want to do in violation or in, in basically um, a slap in the face to the Supreme Court decision of the United States. But when it comes to the exemption for religion, it will be addressed in arbitration. All of these exemptions and processes of how it happened, who made the decisions for the exemptions, how many got granted, how many got denied, that will all be discussed in arbitration as a complaint, uh, one of the topics of complaint from our position. All I can tell you is don't lose your mind. Your exemption was put in, it was submitted in a timely fashion, and we'll address it in arbitration. There is nothing else left to do. Uh, you still will have to comply with the portal if you definitely want to stay in a paid status. Um, I hope that clarifies anything and everything. This is just kind of a short update and it's still turned into nine minutes. Anyway, I'm out of here for the next several days. I will try and put up a Friday update if there's something that needs to be put up. That's why I wanted to put one up today. If you were not here, I will tell you Lodge made history uh, at the awards ceremony before the at the beginning of the meeting today. We gave life-saving awards to the eight officers who helped transport Carlos and Ella to the hospital that night. And uh, it was the first time that an officer whose life was saved was the one who presented the awards to the members who saved their lives. It was a pretty powerful moment. Carlos was here in his normal smiling self and uh, got to thank everybody in front of the room and the officers who helped get him there. It was pretty unique, to say the least. And I'm just trying to end this on a happy note. Um, I'll have something before Christmas either way. If I'm not here Friday, you'll hear a message from me. This just doesn't seem to be wanting to go away. Um, I hope everybody understands the need to change what happens at City Hall, what happens in Springfield, and everywhere else. These politicians are ruining this city, and we cannot let it happen another day longer. Thank you.